Hi guys, welcome back. It's a big one this week, the first locomotive build of the channel. And to kick it off, I've got the Bachman Peter Sam. It's a lovely model, but it won't fit in as it is. So I've also bought the 4D's Chorus Tattoo Body. It's almost a shame to fiddle with a brand new model like this, but unfortunately, it's not going to last. What we really need from it is the chassis. The replacement body is 3D printed, and really does have some serious detail, which supports 4D's reputation. So to remove the Peter Sam body, there are three screws, firstly one under each bunker. I also decided at this point to remove the couplings, as I'll be using my own. The third screw for the body is between the cylinders. When it's off, the footplate can also be removed. I'm going to paint the wheels, as well as the chassis block, so I need to remove the wheel sets. This is done by unscrewing the three screws holding the keeper plate on. Both the wheel sets and the cylinder moulding can be taken off. Spray painting wheels is a faff, so I'll hand paint them. Firstly with Humbrol Grey Primer. And then with the chosen livery for this engine, Humbrol 100 Matte or Brick Red. So to paint the block, I bend down the pickups. You can see how glossy the black is on it, and this is a no-no. I mask off the gears and pickups, as well as the motor, worm gears and basically anything that moves. The block is simply sprayed in matte black just to take the glossy edge off. The model is going to be in heavily weathered, ready to end its work in life type of condition. So I add a bit of rust pigment to the block. You won't see much of this once the wheels are on, but it complements the body when it's added. The matte black really gives the pigment something to cling onto. So onto the cylinders. The shape is fine, but due to Peter Sam's body, the cylinders are missing their, well, what I'm assuming are like oiling points. So using a pin drill, I'll first add the holes for these. The cylinders can now be primed. And painted in Humbrol 100, this time with the airbrush. I've picked out some of the details in black and fitted the oily thingies, which are actually handrail knobs from the spare box. These can be primed and painted in gold. The chassis can now be put back together. The slide rods are a bit tricky, so it takes some patience. You can see already how a little time spent on the chassis has really improved the look, even if you just sprayed the black with the matte varnish and nothing else. I quickly test fit the new body and as expected, nothing needs fine tuning. Nice work 40s. So on to the body. Honestly there isn't much prep to this. I lightly sanded the rounded areas with wet and dry, such as the roof and the saddle tank, to reduce the print lines, but that's about it. I was tempted to drill out the rear cab sheet door, however the worm gear would be too obvious so it's better left in. A cotton bud is now attached to both parts of the body to aid painting. It all gets a shot of grey primer. Then red oxide primer. And finally the body colour, Humbrol 100, 
which looks suspiciously like the red oxide, if a little more orange. Painting with an airbrush really comes into its own with a model like this, as you get such fine finish it doesn't lose any of the model's details, which is easily done if you hand paint, especially with enamel that is usually thicker. The top part of the cab is done at the same time. Even if the paint's from the same pot, painting everything at the same time assures it's a 100% match. The final job for the airbrush is a coat of matte varnish. When it's dry, and I leave it for about 24 hours to be sure, I mask off everything else, staying in Humbrol 100. The old chorus was a funny railway. Unlike other narrow gauge lines, it's virtually impossible to find a colour photo pre-preservation. As I said, this isn't an exact model of number 4, so I want to go with brick red. The model is now painted with black primer, which, even though it's matte, isn't quite matte enough, so it then gets a coat of the good old school poster paint black. Super matte finish, which is what you need for an older smoke box. When it's dry, the masking tape is removed, which is very satisfying. Especially if paint hasn't seeped underneath. I found evidence that the wooden buffer beams actually came factory fitted on number 4, so I wanted to paint chip these, as if they attempted to paint them red early on and it's worn off. I use Miniature Paints number 82 Earth Brown as a base. I then dry brush a mix of Earth Brown and light antique white over the top. To start the chipping process, I use the same method as in the tie rod wagon video. However, I've hand painted this time, and it's proved to give a much less convincing effect. I think it's due to the coats being a bit thick. Leaving that coat to dry, I focus on other details, such as around the cab openings, the lamp brackets, and the rear cab sheet opening cover. The window spectacles are painted gold. I find painting towards the outer rim helps get a tidy edge on these. The cab interior is now painted. The lower half is black, whilst the upper section is cream. Fun fact, this is my least favourite job out of anything to do with modelling. And that includes woodwork on the layouts. It needs about three coats to get a good coverage. Back to the buffer beams and the red's ready to go on. I went with Christmas red, but if I wasn't chipping it in acrylic I'd probably go with a Humbrol red enamel for the buffer beams, as Christmas red does seem a bit pale, not that you'll see much of it at the end. Leaving that to dry I weather the rest of the body. Black areas are now dry brushed with a mix of black and light antique white. Most of the effort is put into the smoke box, as during its last days on Chorus number 4's smoke box was in very poor condition, even burning off the protective paint in places. I do a little bit inside the cap, not that you'll see it. The body is now dry brushed with a mix of Humbrol 100 and light antique white. I try to keep the direction of painting vertical on the tanks due to the wear from weather. Now the red is dried off, the buffer beams are now attacked with clean water on a stiff brush. I try to keep the paint removal to where the wagon's dumb buffers would be hitting the most. You can see I'm actually struggling to remove paint compared to on the tie rod wagons. Lesson learned. I'll now finish by hand painting the details. The whistle's painted gold, as is the tank filler cap knob. And finally the smoke box dart. Actually, is it a dart without the other parts? It's, it, let's call it a handle, the smoke box handle. I now mask off the pipe running along the tank. This is gonna be painted black and I wanted a nice straight finish.
Add in the masking tape only adds a minute or two, but the result is so much better. Oh, and don't forget to make the bracket. I wanted the pipework to be a different shade to the whistle and other bits, so I went with the Humbrol Metallic 16. It almost has a bronze tone to it, which works nicely for pipes. So onto the cab interior. Initially, I was only going to paint the water level glass, as it's mostly going to be obscured when they get a crew. But in the end, I got carried away and pretty much painted everything. It's nice to know it's there, even if you won't see it. And here it comes, a thick coat of black. And just like the wagons, I put it on thick so it doesn't dry before I get time to wash it off again. And yes, even after so many models, this part is still daunting. I make sure I get into all the little crevices, and these are the areas where it will stay. Clean water is now used to rinse it off. I don't want to clean it all off, and as you'll see the black is clinging around the details, which will give a lovely effect when it's dry. So the only thing I wanted to add to the model were splash guards that the chorus added to the tank. These were added due to lazy filling of the tank, where water would run down onto the motion, washing away the lubrication and causing it to run hot. Here I've cut them from plaster card. As you'll see at the end, they're quite thick, so since the video I've replaced them with etch brass. A wet coat and a rust pigment is added to the smoke box. Using water to blend it all together creates a smoother effect than using dry pigment. Ammo streak and grime is applied to the panels, obviously brushing downwards following gravity. When it's dry, it's quite a subtle addition, but it does add interest to the surface. A first go with Ammo's wet effects here, and following reference photos, it's added below the smoke box door and around the tank filler cap. You could use the gloss varnish, but this stuff is really shiny when it's dry. The splashes are now glued on with super glue and given a coat of matte black to blend them in with the body. The window glass can go in as well. They came with the kit and are a push fit, but a drop of glue and glaze won't go amiss. The top of the cap can now be glued into position. Again, I use super glue. The only thing to watch here is that the cab rear was warped and leaning into the cab, so I just needed to hold in place while the glue set, and that fixed the problem. The body has a printed coal load with the bunker, but I thought adding my own coal would add a little bit of interest. To glue the coal in, I first put a bit of ballast bond, then add the coal, then another bit of ballast bond to set it firm. Finally, the body and chassis can unite. I haven't actually glued it or anything, it's just a really good push fit. And it sits level. So there we go, we have our first engine. Bachmann and Fordies have done an amazing job on these models. The only real issue with the body was that I had quite deep print marks on the bunker sides. However, the weathering has hid these now. The model does need a few bits. A crew, etch number plates and obviously couplings, but I still haven't decided on these. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this model has come out. The Chorus Tattoo is one of my favourite class of engine, and it should look right at home pulling the wagons I've built during these videos. I'm not really happy with the buffer beams, so I might go back to fix these in the future. And as I mentioned before, I have replaced the splashes with etch brass, and it looks way better. 
So thanks for watching, remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to feed my withering ego. Cheers.